Now we move to how to use Lotto. So I'm going to go more in details on the um, LSF commands. Um, but before that, just a, a schematic presentation of the workflow. So just to kind of summarize what I've said earlier. So we're starting from testing your code on a site analysis server. Gives you, this will help you estimate the resources needed to submit the job um, or to submit your task to Lotus. So now, now you have to wrap this command or application within a job script file. So you write a job script, you're still on the side machine here, and you're still on the side machine, you submit using the BSOP command. So once you submit your job, um, so what I said, so you submit, of course you have, to, if you haven't specified the queue, that will go directly to the short serial queue as is the default. If you have specified the queue, then it will be uh, queued on that on the on the queue that you gave. So once on the queue, the job is assigned. Um, the job will be on a state of pending or pent, and it will have a job ID number. Now LSF will uh, do a lot of communication with all the resources and check for uh, uh, the uh, uh, compute nodes that has that requirement of memory um, and. Um, course and also the uh, the uh, uh, whether they are all free it depends what you've put in your whether you want an exclusive or non-exclusive so once the uh, resources are available lsf will dispatch or will launch uh, to your your job to run on the compute node so it's it's it will be moved to the compute node and it starts running well, during the stage between the job, between the queuing and the running, you can um, you can uh, query on the status of your uh, of your job using the job status command I shown earlier, or you might decide that it's not maybe you want to not run it now, or maybe you want to verify other things. Then you might consider to uh, uh, stop it and uh, resume it later, or maybe even kill it. Maybe you put the wrong the wrong the wrong resource requirements, so we can go and. Um, uh, kill the, the job from LSF. So in this case, whatever this, whatever you decide here, the job is uh, completed, then it depends on the exit code, zero or non-zero, and all the output file, the standard error and output file are ready for you to inspect. So the first um, command to submit, um, um, once you are on the site analysis server, is BSOP, you can do it directly from the command line as shown here. I just put the minimum options here. So BSOP, I'm just specifying the output file, the time, I put 10 minutes, and my command is a simple command, is bin host name, meaning give me the name of the compute node on which this command would run. Simple. Now this is this is okay to use just uh, to pass the argument to be sub directly from the command line. But if this gets more complex, when you have many other options, when you have a input file for your codes and config file, so this might get really long and that will be like a sequence of command. So it is recommended to uh, gather all this in a script file. Uh, for example, here, and redirect the file um, by the, uh, the less than uh, sign, like here, bsop, demo bsop. So I call this file demo bsop. It's a bash, so it's the, it's, you have the bash interpreter command at the top. But what you need to do for, the, for bsop options, you need to put them as you put them in the command line, but you precede them with the, the directive bsop, which is a hash bsop. It has to be in uh, um, capital, uh, uh, capital letters because it's case sensitive. So the bash, when it's executed, it will ignore this because it won't, uh, it won't process them, they are considered as comments. But because when it gets directed to the BSOP, BSOP will parse this as part of the argument. So they are read from the directive. So more, import, uh, more, uh, more on the um, um, uh, option to BSOP are um, um, collected here in this table. So the first option is the queue. Um, as I said, you need to specify this if you don't want your job to run on the default queue. 
the um, runtime, the minus W uh, hours and minutes. So you need to specify the runtime limit if you're, you don't want your job to be terminated after one hour because then the default time will apply. And also writing standard uh, job aqua and air file. Um, so you want, you want to see how your job has, um, 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 so it's like the evolution, how the job, when the job started, when it's complete, if there are any, uh, any error messages that get all collected in an output file. If you omit the error file, let here minus E file name too. So what the, the error file, it will still be written to the output file. You find everything in one file. Now, one important uh, uh, flag here or option to be sub is the uh, resources uh, uh, requirements. So you can define um, or specify your resources requirement using the minus capital R, R usage, mem equal XX. So here we are specifying the memory that, our, that the task need, for example, and XX is the, the memory size in, uh, in megabytes. If you want to specify the memory, uh, the memory control limits, then you can use the minus capital M flag and you put the, the value here in, uh, in megabytes. I just mentioned that the units in the past uh, used to be kilobytes, well, we have, we have uh, since the last um, two months, three months, over three months, that has changed. So it's all uniform now, it's megabytes everywhere. Uh, minor G, uh, J, G, uh, job name, so we can specify the name. So just substitute what is uh, everything here by the name that you want. That will help you for manipulating job or reference to the job. If it's a parallel job, you need to specify the number of cores. For example, if you put minus N16, so it will be 16 cores uh, are allocated for your job. Um, if you want an exclusive access to the computer, the whole compute node is just for your a job, no users will be running jobs on it, uh, then you can put the minus X, which is mm -hmm. requesting an exclusive mm -hmm. execution mode in your B sub command. This will usually result in a longer queuing time, so please um, uh, expect that your job will, will queue longer to make sure that the compute node is completely free of jobs. And the other one is the, um, sec uh, the minus M host group. That is to specify the CPU model. I'm not going to cover this, but just for you to know, you can read on the map or uh, um, join, it, join us in the next webinar, as well as on the dependency expression. So you can create some uh, uh, um, dependency trees from different jobs. So you can create a simple workflow that using dependencies um, that is possible in, uh, in, uh, on, on Lotus using LSF and using the option minus W. And, um, more detail on this could be covered next time. And also the uh, job array, so we can use, uh, run some sort of, it's a parallelism, um, an embarrassingly parallel jobs that you can run using job array. And that's again, it's gonna be covered next time. So now the queue selection, as I said, um, you don't need to put minus Q with the Q name, minus Q short serial, because short serial is already default, default, but it's good to have it in your scripts just to get into the habit in case you might need to move from the short series to other queues. So if you want, a bit, and before deciding which queue to use, you can use the um, BQs uh, LSF command that can show you uh, detail on the queue and the load on the queues. And this is uh, the output of LSF command is shown here. And uh, you can see the different queues. So what's up here and blue are, uh, uh, arrow here are the um, uh, Lotus queue. Please ignore the other ones. The, the other ones are all private queues. And the default queue is, is the short serial. For example, you can see um, um, this, um, this was taken yesterday. Quite, quite he heavily, uh, heavily pending jobs on, on this queue and uh, comparing to other queues. So the job runtime limits, um, again, if you don't want the default value of an hour to apply, you need to set it. For example, here, I've got a job that just needs 30 minutes. Why if you don't set it, if, if I, why if I don't set it then, LSF will wait, will, will look for, uh, for resources that are gonna be free, free for, for one hour. Or, and if you set it for 30 minutes, it does what's called backfilling. 
so it find a resource that it can be free for that time so you can get your job quickly uh, quickly launched so if it's different than one hour please set the time and please remember that the maximum allowed runtime is very specific as i've shown it's 40 hour, uh, 48 hours for the parallel 24 for the serial and up to seven days for the long serial and even if you specify your runtime um, uh, your runtime limit in your uh, in your submission, LSF will still ter ter terminate because that's the that's the threshold. It won't go beyond that limit. Now the next one is the um, um, resources um, uh, requ um, requ uh, requesting resources. So you have to tell LSF LS uh, what how much memory your job use. LSF cannot predict. It can do a default value for you. But it cannot predict how much how much your job uh, uh, needs. So it's all it's good practice to have some sort some estimation from either previous previous jobs or if it's a first run job, make sure you don't you don't run it with um, for long. Reduce the runtime, or maybe run it on on uh, request on running it on the high memory host, and maybe even request to run it exclusively. But because if it's if it's failed, it will just affect you and not our other users. So it's good to have an estimate. So you can set it with the minus R user flag as seen here. I'll give you an example here. So minus R. So for example, user four um, wants to submit a job that uses 6,000 megabytes shown here. So um, here we have just a compute node. I just give a simple example. We don't have compute node with four core, but it's just to simplify it. So we have a compute node with four core. Three users are running on this compute node, and it has one core free. And when you look at the memory, the memory size of this compute node uh, example is 32 gigabytes shared uh, by all four cores. And now when you look at how the memory is uh, being used, you, have, you can see, for example, job one is using four gigabytes, job two, 12, and job 310 and what's in green is the the, the free memory now LSF had looked at the, had the um, find that this host is suitable because it has six gigabyte free and it has one single core free so my job get allocated to to this uh, to this host because I, I made it specific now if you don't um, make the um, the memory um, uh, specific it will just use a default is eight gigabyte in this case my job will be still waiting or pending because i will um I'll, it won't be allocated to this because it will just take the default that it needs eight gigabyte when in fact it doesn't i just need that estimated to six gigabyte so it's good to know an estimate how much memory your code were or your code or your task will use Now, um, with the memory usage, um, um, you need to use the uh, you need to specify the memory control limit, and it's in uh, as um, especially in this is this this is uh, this apply for job submitted to serial queues. And um, I'm going to illustrate here. So, for example, this job here is used twelve is use um, the memory is twelve giga uh, twelve gigabytes. And I have to put the limit at 12 gigabytes. If I don't put the limit at 12 gigabytes, the, the LSF will terminate these jobs, even if they have an allocation of 12 gigabytes. So um, you need to specify the memory control limit as equal to the same uh, value of the usage. Now, some uh, example of um, monitoring job. There's B jobs. B jobs come and give you the status of your jobs active job. And the, there's an option which is quite good is to give you the, the number of jobs in uh, with different uh, states from pending to to running. And this is here, here more other uh, option that you can um, look at, use if you want to look at just a um, pending or running only jobs. Important note on B jobs and BQ: please don't use don't run B jobs command on constant loop or frequently every few seconds. This, this will really affect the performance of LSF because LSF has a limit on the number of queries that can, can, uh, that can handle co uh, concurrently and which affects other users not being able to submit jobs to launchers. 
You can also review all the jobs uh, using behest, but behest needs to need to know the number of uh, log five because log five get uh, periodically uh, backed up and pruned. And uh, we advise not to use this. Uh, try to use maybe log so just one log five. If you do many log five, it will it's gonna be it will take a long time. So uh, better to avoid uh, you searching many many log five at the same time. What you can do in terms of manipulation, as I said, you can suspend, uh, resume, and these are all the commands. You give the job ID and uh, the message could, um, will be displayed to you as stopped, resumed, or, or killed. And you can kill the job in the run or pending st state, and you just use the pkill uh, command. There are other options, but this is just the more important ones to know. To summarize the LSF command and job states, this is shows you on the left, you submit BSOP, uh, the BSOP, Jobs goes into the pen. This is the, the command that you can use that gives you this state, and then once um, the resources are available, the job is uh, is uh, submitted for running. So the job state changed to run. If you do sus if you suspending, it changed to user suspended. It's going to be uh, system suspended. So it shows you a summary of all the command and that how the job state changes. Now, if it's completed, if it's done, fine. No uh, exit exit is equal zero. If it's not completed, you will have an exit value. And then you can look at the, uh, the output, the output files. Um, the output files are good to, to inspect because it gives you on which ho ho com compute node or host uh, your job run, what other command that has been used, the working in home directory, and also you can see which exit code, which is good to report uh, when you have problem. And one more important thing is the section on the resource usage summary that you can find at the very bottom of your uh, output file, as shown here in the figure. But for example, this 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 uh, job used maximum 55. There was no need to request uh, memory because it's less than, than than one gigabyte. Now, reporting by job to issue to CEDA, please provide the job ID number. Give us more description. On, on the issue, whether it's file, is it running slow, pending, or unable to submit, please pr uh, provide on which uh, submission host were you, and more detail on the, on, on the parallelism, if there's any parallelism uh, implemented, and also some, um, some detail on the input and output. This is mainly for the right operation because the storage is different. There are some storage that allow it, some that don't. And then more links um, uh, for you to read later. Um, and also I mentioned there's a Jasmine dashboard that you can um, go, it's, it's a web interface that give you the load on, on, on Lotus. But you can do that directly from your terminal using the queues or the hosts. So we covered the um, um, introduction on processing capability. We covered Lotus um, uh, as a cluster and uh, its components and also example of how it's been used and the, what are the drivers to using Lotus and all the technicality of using it. Presentation and video of this webinar will be made available and, uh, at um, this link. Um, and thanks to the um, uh, scientific computing department uh, and the um, member of Jasmine Cedar uh, who are uh, um, jointly managing the um, Jasmine system and um, I want also to mention upcoming events. We have um, a webinar um, scheduled to run on the 1st of November, the introduction to Git and GitHub webinar. Um, so registration are open. And there's another a workshop, it's a half day workshop um, uh, by on the um, introduction and uh, use it, use it of the new re-engineered Python interface uh, to call uh, numerical algorithm group libraries. That is on the 28th of November in the Cup, well, in Iran actually. So, more information, please watch this space on uh, www.cda.ac.uk training webinars.